Hi, Bishop William Johnson from our familiar home here in St. Ambrose Cathedral, these marvelous summer months, and already the, the weeks of July are kind of winding down at a time when much is going on, and we're so delighted again as we emerge partly beyond the pandemic that some of the great signature events of this time of year and the cycle of years could take place, such as Ragbri, uh, 15,000 closest friends riding across the state of Iowa in rather scorching heat this week, so we pray for their safety as well. And of course, then the Olympics also, that National, international gathering of so many young people, their artistry, their talents, their athleticism, and uh, the, the diversity of nations gathering together in a moment of peace that renews our hope for humanity in that way. Uh, John Paul II, the, the St. John Paul, speaks in his letter to artists about the ways in which we are God that gives us our humanity and we discover our various gifts, but he distinguishes between the creator and a craftsperson, the creator bestowing being existence life when there was no thing as God does in creating us in his own image. He entrusts us to ourselves, the craft of shaping our own humanity. And so we know ourselves to be gifted, whether we formally consider ourselves to be artists or accountants or attorneys or any other walk in life, carpenters perhaps, as St. Joseph was. But like St. Joseph, we don't want to dominate our own humanity. We want to continue to collaborate with God, receiving as gifts so that then we can give ourselves as a gift as our passions are stirred in so many ways. And we know that the Olympic uh, athlete, the 5,000, 10,000 meter runner, Carissa Schweitzer from uh, Des Moines, her great uh, passion, she went to Dowling Catholic High School then the University of Missouri. We look for her to excel on the track later this week. The flame having already arrived to light the Olympic cauldron in Tokyo. We kind of can make that analogy to what our calling is in Christ, called to be witnesses to the gospel wherever we find ourselves, wherever we live. Uh, St. Alberto Hurtado once said that being an apostle doesn't mean being wearing a lapel pin. It's not speaking about the truth, but living it, embodying it, and who we are as we are transformed. And so it doesn't mean carrying a torch in hand, but possessing a light, but being light. And so the torch that was handed off, there are others who's handed off to us this uh, great stewardship of our faith, the message of the gospel, the truth that Jesus has died and has risen again, never more to die. And so we are already transformed, but ever more artisans of our own humanity as we are called to be. And so I think that sense that, uh, I pray in particularly uh, for our young people who maybe are making a major life transition, perhaps anticipating in a few weeks going off to college or university, or maybe moving to a different school or different location, starting a new chapter of their lives. Uh, Carissa Schweitzer is known for, before every race, calling her grandfather, Frank, to touch base with him, to receive, yes, for some practical strategic uh, advice, but I think just more being reassured by having the, the grandfather, the father figure that brings her reassurance, that quiets her anxieties, and gives her great uh, passion and hope for the event that is before her. When uh, Mary Magdalene encountered Jesus in the garden after the resurrection, he told her, go, be like a torch, I'm paraphrasing, but go and carry the gospel that you have seen me and that I live. I'm going to my father and your father. And so I think so many young people looking for that person who charts the way for them, a father figure. And we have that figure, the father of Jesus, the heavenly father who wants to be there for us, that we might consult him, that we might have that conversation before every significant life moment, but more in that just ongoing day-to-day -day basis so that then God can spark your passion as you look to choose a major, as you're discerning your path in life, that you might be ablaze a, a with the Holy Spirit in this way. And as that beautiful poem adapted from Father Pedro Rupe would speak about, to fall in love, because nothing's more practical than finding God, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What we're in love with seizes is our imagination. It will affect all that we're about. It will decide what gets us out of bed in the morning, what we do in the evenings and weekends, what we read, what we know, what breaks our hearts, and what amazes us with joy and gratitude 
would fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. And so that's my prayer for you young people and for not so young people that we continue to by our, our conversations with God, the Father of Jesus, with Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit, and with those saints who are not trying to simply be copies but find their own unique personhood in what God has created them to be. To discover our vocations where we can make ourselves a gift to others as we offer our lives joyfully without reservation. And so may you continue to savor these summer months. Be safe whether you're bicycling on the road or any of your other uh, pursuits. And again, for some whose passion is cycling like it is for me, although I haven't gotten the miles on the road that I want to, there's another opportunity for us to be witnesses to life, the culture of life, and also to, to get in a few miles in the saddle. There's going to be a special ride, Biking for Babies Ankeny Local Ride on Saturday, August 7th. It's going to be on the uh, Ankeny High Trestle Trailhead and it'll offer opportunities for a five mile ride with children and families, no cost, or a 23 mile ride, and a 48 mile ride. That probably goes all the way to the Trestle and back then to Ankeny. But it's going to support pregnancy resource centers, inner visions and agape centers, as well as Martha's House Maternity Home. And so look for it on the website, the posting, the link that's uh, made available to you here on the screen. And consider, maybe as you've already ridden Ragbri, or maybe not, uh, to come out and get those legs churning, but to do so in a way that we're together in solidarity, witnessing to those who perhaps need to know that God has turned toward them and offer them that support as they bring life into the world. And may God continue to draw us ever more to that place, that destination He has set in store for us.